Thank you, uh, everyone, and uh, thank you, Marcus, that uh, actually brought the, uh, the thing of user-generated content uh, in the map making um, uh, to the stage. Um, to a certain extent, you know, last year I was here and I was uh, introducing ways and I was speaking about different things. Uh, this year, uh, uh, Marco asked us to speak about uh, disruptiveness, and I think that uh, um, no one is actually disrupting the space more powerful than what Waze is doing in, in, the, in the space of map making, in the space of navigation, in the space of driving application. Uh, and Marcus before me uh, was right. It's crowdsourcing. This is the disruptiveness. So uh, I wasn't sure that this is exactly the, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, text that I've used. But uh, last year when we were here, we were speaking about crowdsourcing of uh, map making and crowdsourcing of traffic information in a free application. And we actually had a, um, a pretty nice traction last year. We had about 7 million users. Uh, all of them are drivers, and so we had 7 million drivers. This year, we actually have 30 million, so uh, we quadrupled the number of users. Um, in many places, it's much more than that, and you, look, you know, if you look, for example, on the amount of driven kilometers by the community of the drivers, it's eight times higher than it, where it was last year. Um, and I think that this growth is... Um, a clear indication that what we are providing to our drivers is becoming significantly more valuable than simply just another navigation application. Um, the engine behind it, and uh, you know, many, play, many people are asking about, uh, so how do you do crowdsourcing of the maps? There is the OpenStreetMap approach, which is basically map editing tools on the web and people are actually going there. In the Waze case, it's actually a combination of uh, simply people driving. So when you drive with the application, we collect the GPS point as you drive, and when we collect a lot of those, it's starting to look like a map, right? So if I will tell you that this is a traffic circle up there, it looks like a traffic circle. And it, you, know, you can even tell the difference between a major road and a minor road, and if there are 100 people going one direction and there is no one else going the other direction, that will be one-way street. And, and if, you know, if there are 100 people going that direction and only five going the other direction, that will be one-way street in Tel Aviv. <laughs> and, and so this is, you know, this is how we drive. Sorry about that. And, uh, but uh, essentially, we are able to automatically generate a navigable road grid out of what people are driving. So wherever you drive, we generate uh, the road, and uh, when we combine many paths or many GPS traces on top of each other, we actually have a very accurate map. This is not a complete map, and this is where we are using um, map editing tools and enable a community to provide us with uh, street names and to provide us with additional information that is needed on the map. And today we have about 150,000 map editors, and every week there are 2,000 more um, map editors that are actually going into the map editing tools and updating the map in their area. They, uh, you know, fixing the map, adding information, points of interest, names, house numbers, and so forth. Now, on top of that, uh, we can actually have, you know, when, when drivers are, okay, when drivers are driving, we actually detect how fast they are driving. And if all of a sudden they drive slow, we know that there is a traffic jam right there. And because we collect the GPS data in order to build maps, we collect them frequent enough to be able to even determine that there is a traffic jam based on a single vehicle. So we can tell the difference between someone stuck in traffic versus someone pull over to 7-Eleven or something or to a gas station. And obviously, if we have a lot of those, then we get a very, very accurate and real-time picture of what the traffic light is right now, and we can route people around. On top of that, in the application itself, people can provide additional information. So for example, they can provide um, you know, um, speed traps, they can provide uh, policemen, they can provide uh, traffic jam accident, and so forth. And this is basically what we are doing. Now, um, essentially, there is always a question of what happened at the beginning. So the first driver to drive someplace, actually the car avatar will turn into uh, Okay, so we will watch the video for a second. What, what we are seeing in the video is actually how map is being created out of nothing. So it started with a blank page, different places in Eastern Europe. 
Um, initially, you can see the date on the bottom, so it started in 2010, at the beginning of 2010, and slowly, slowly, the map is being built. It will zoom in into the center area um, in, a, in a few seconds, and then you can actually see the center area of, of Bratislava and then m m multiple other places, uh, how the map is being created. The map is actually being updated every day. So if you have a TomTom -tom device uh, and your map is outdated, the map is outdated. On Waze, it wouldn't happen, right? Because the map is update, it's updated literally every day. Um, after maybe four or five months, what we had there is a good enough map to enable drivers to uh, uh, drive um, um, you know, very accurately in, in that area. And this video, actually, it's on YouTube. You can see that um, goes on and on and on to multiple places. The interesting part about this video is that we haven't made it. It was done by someone from the community that took the snapshot of the map evolution, and we found out about it only about a year later. Now, when we are looking into uh, uh, what, we, what we are seeing here is actually traffic in LA, and essentially we are seeing two kinds of traffic information here. One is, so this is Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening, Sunday night, and then mo Monday morning rush hours. And we are seeing two types of information. The dots are basically actively reported by a driver. So someone is driving around, see a policeman, click on the, on the policeman, and there, there is a clear report of the policeman there and so forth, and road hazard and traffic and so forth. In addition, we see the color coding. So yellow, orange, red are automatically generated by the system based on the actual speed that people are driving in the area. Um, and um, you can definitely see that Los Angeles actually goes to sleep at night, so during the night there is barely nothing there. Um, but, uh, um, you know, as soon as we're starting to approach 4 or 5 a.m., we will start to see some initial drivers, and then um, 6, 7 a.m., the rush hours of Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a very interesting city for us, not only because we have a million users there, but because they are, the road grid there is so... Um, you know, so rich that there are so many alternatives. Now you can actually see the traffic jams of uh, LA in the morning in the rush hours. And uh, uh, um, I know it looks uh, interesting, but the traffic there is pretty severe. Um, today in the US, we have about eight and a half million users, uh, and we essentially capture every traffic jam in the, in the state. We capture, as soon as we reach critical mass, we capture pretty much every traffic jam in the area, and we can obviously route people around that. And you know, in, in routing, there is only one question that we care about. Should I get off the highway or not? And this is exactly what we do to our drivers. Um, we started beginning of 2009, uh, and it took us about three years to reach the, the first 10 million users. Uh, and then uh, the last 10 million took us about uh, six months. Right now, we are growing at uh, almost 3 million a month, so between 2.5 and, and 3 million a month. So probably three, four months, we will reach the next 10 million. And it's quite obvious that in each and every market, as soon as we reach critical mass, then the value of the information and the quality of the service that we provide uh, is increasing dramatically, and it becomes better and better and better. In the App Store, for example, we have five stars. Uh, Marcus mentioned earlier the fiasco that Apple had, so Tim Cook has uh, part of, the uh, of being apologetic, also recommended ways as an alternative, uh, so we are an alternative, and the reason is that we own our own maps. Um, and um, the good thing is that the usage increased over time, so not only that we have you know, more and more users, but also the usage increased over time. When we launched, we had about a uh, new user every hour. Now it's about new user every second. And we do reach tipping point in many geographies. So most of the US, most of Latin America, um, uh, Italy, France, Netherlands, Sweden. Um, there was a guy here mentioning that they have you know, 400,000 users in Sweden. So do we. Right? And, but they, they are all drivers in Sweden, in our case. Um, and uh, um, probably on the right track in about half of the world, or a little bit uh, more than half of the world, which also means that we are not on the right track on the rest of it. <clears throat> but disruptiveness doesn't end on navigation. It also goes into television, where about a year ago, we started to provide traffic information on the television in the US. And again, with our approach, we basically say, you know, they ask how much it will cost us, and we say, um, how about free? 
right? And the power of free is that we very, very fast being adopted by many TV channels, and what we get in return is distribution, right? So they are promoting us, they are broadcasting, um, you know, they are broadcasting traffic information from the application itself, and obviously we like that. Let's speak a little bit more about disruptiveness, and this is uh, interesting. This is the new version of Waze that is much more social, and in particular, enable uh, picking up a friend or um, you know, driving to an event together and so forth. And it's all started with uh, actually me um, need to pick up my 11 years old son from school, and you know, I was supposed to be there at 5 o'clock. I was there actually at 4.59 waiting for him, right? And, and uh, um, I'm waiting, he's not showing up, I'm calling him, he's saying at the, I'm at the gate, I'm saying, no, no, I don't see you, I'm at the gate, right? And so I step out of the car, walking around, looking for him, he's not there, I'm calling him, where are you? And say, I'm just by the gate. I say, why don't you step outside so I can see you, right? So he say, I just did, right, but I don't see him. Then I figure out that he's probably on the other gate. So I was driving around to the other gate, and at the same time, he was walking inside the school to the other gate because he figured out the same thing. Now, obviously, I come to the other gate, he's not there. I was completely pissed off. I, I was, actually, I thought that he's you know, kidding me, right? And so I drove home, and he showed up about uh, half an hour later crying that he didn't find me. So not a good daddy, but uh, at least in terms of need for the feature, that was pretty clear. Today, you can actually send your location and their location, and they can, you know, if you need to, some, to pick someone up, they will see you, and you will see them, and you know exactly to get to the, same, to the right place. And maybe the last place that we are disrupting is in the car industry. This is uh, Honda, and it's actually not a standard navigation application, it's a dumb screen, right? The screen itself doesn't do anything. Application runs on the iPhone, and essentially, everything that is available on the iPhone is available on the, on the large display um, in terms of viewing the information, in terms of using that as a touch screen. And the entire US market is moving into this direction. Europe is not there yet. The entire US market is moving into this direction that instead of having you know, car makers spending a lot of money on buying navigation software and buying maps, they're basically saying, you know, we don't care about that anymore. We will let the users come with their connectivity, with their application, with their content, with their liability into the car, and take care of that. And so another market that we are disrupting in that sense, um, and essentially, you know, if, if I would uh, summarize that, then um, 11 years ago, there was no Wikipedia. Today, there is no Britannica. And so if you would ask me, is that means that, uh, you know, Navtech and Telatlas will die in 11 years? We started in 2007, so their, their, their term is probably shorter. Um, there are only four companies that own global maps, Google, Waze, Navtech, and Teleatlas. And of them, um, you know, Google and Waze don't care how much it costs to make them. Google, because they actually don't care. They have so much money that they don't care. And Waze, because it doesn't cost us anything. So we essentially uh, redefining map making and navigation and traffic and traffic on television and car navigation and social driving and all these categories, we're simply redefining them. Now, obviously, I would imagine that there should be a question, so what's the difference between OpenStreetMap and us? This is only for drivers, right? If you use Waze not for driving, it's not a good idea. Okay, thank you.